Hey, hi, Sovik. Good morning. Uh, this is Nick. We'll get started in some time, uh, waiting for a few more participants to join in. All right. So we'll get started in some time. Perfect. Thanks for your acknowledgement in the chat. Thank you.
Hi, uh, a very warm welcome to uh, Mukul and Sauve. Thanks so much, guys, for joining in. My name is Nick, and uh, we are going to go live in a few more seconds, few more minutes. I'm just checking with everyone uh, what's their status like. So I, I've got confirmation from Anuja and Atanu that they're not going to join in. I'm just checking with other if they are going to join in another few more minutes. Uh, then I'm going to wait, else we'll start the session. So just, just give me five more minutes.
All right, so welcome to the session, Ramnik. We're going to get started at 10 or 10. Uh, another couple of minutes. I'm just checking with others also if, they're, if, if there's someone else who's going to join in or not. Just give me a couple of more minutes. Thanks. All right, thanks everyone for joining in. My name is Nick and welcome to yet another session of the Digital Marketing Training. Uh, it's been uh, a 12 minutes wait for everybody to join in and thanks so much for your patience and for staying up here for 12, 15 minutes. So as usual, let's begin our session and I'm, uh, I really apologize for the last Sunday, but there, there was no session because of me. I can join in some personal reasons. My daughter was not well, like I mentioned. Uh, Hopefully things will go well and we'll have back-to-back uh, -back sessions every Saturday and Sunday and uh, we'll, we'll continue at the same pace which we were doing earlier. Trying to check, I'm audible, right? I'm audible perfectly loud and clear and I also you guys can see my screen. Just trying to check with each one of you. Can you give me a quick confirmation in the chat window? Thank you, Mukul, for the confirmation. How about others? Are you there? 
All right. Right, Ramnik. I'm going to take your questions. Uh, you, you can you can keep your questions with you. Uh, as of now, I I'm going to come across with everyone and ask you if uh, if you guys have got questions. So you can hear me, right? Uh, Ramnik, you're able to hear me, and so if you're able to hear me, right? All right. So got confirmation from Mukul and Ramnik. Perfect. So let's get started with uh, doing a small recap, guys. A recap in sense uh, what all topics did we cover across last Saturday? Would request. You do, do mention that. Uh, all right, so I think, Ramnik, you do mention, uh, did mention the recap thing only. Right, exactly, copyscape.com. I thought this is a question. So, uh, okay, um, my apologies. I thought this there's a question. So, yes, we did cover across copyscape last time, which has helped in terms of removing across duplicate content. That is correct. And uh, what else? Uh, what all things did we cover across in the previous session? All right. Hi. Welcome to the session, Anuj. Uh, great that you did join in. Perfect. So it was only the last week, guys, I didn't have a session. Otherwise, we had back-to-back -back sessions. Till the time you do not get a, uh, you know, any communication from me, it means the sessions are, sessions are lined up in the same manner every Saturday and Sunday. All right. So uh, don't assume that there is no session, please. Every Saturday and Sunday, we'll be having a session until unless there's no set of communication within the WhatsApp group. Okay, so uh, Copyscape was one. All right, Mukul says the other thing which we did discuss was the legal aspects. If in case uh, we do want to go ahead and uh, file, a, file across a legal complaint, uh, you know, when whenever there is a duplicate content, exactly we did cover across that, which was the DMCA.com. Ramnik says we did cover across the domain authority and page authority. Absolutely correct. These are the two major matrices which are being uh, which are being given across by Moss.com for the purpose of uh, identifying uh, the overall credibility of a particular website. How does it really stand in the entire web wide worldwide web and so forth? Mukul says we covered across the copy contained duplicate. Absolutely, yes. Ramnik says also we covered Google Search Console and Remaster. All right, so we've done that. I was under the impression that we haven't done it. So we have covered Google Search Console and Webmaster. So we just have a few more things left. Uh, I got a request, I think that was from uh, Anuja, I believe who did say that she wanted to understand the off-page techniques which were being used earlier. Now, she's not present today. Uh, but still, uh, the session is getting recorded. I'll definitely go ahead and uh, you know, take, just, just give a brief about it. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and open across one of the off-page optimization sheet uh, from a, you know, of, of one of my clients. Uh, whose search engine optimization is uh, of his website is getting done for quite some time, and uh, the sheet which I'm going to open across is going to be a older one. When I say older one, when those off-page techniques were being used, I'm I'm repeating again. So the recap is being done. I'm I'm uh, starting with the session, and the first and the foremost thing which I'm uh, taking over here is off-page again. Off-page we have understood uh, in the last session the way it is done these days. Right. When I say these days, as in the in today's Google uh, Google algorithm, if you talk about Google's algorithm, it keeps getting changed. Right. So if you talk about the present situation, whatever we have discussed last time, that's the thing which works in the off page, where you go ahead and connect with several great websites, uh, uh, you know, good websites which have got a considerable DA and PA, which is domain authority and PA. For your page authority, and you uh, sort of barter with them, you sort of uh, uh, do negotiation with them, you get into networking, you build relationship, and then you build, uh, uh, you know, backlinks for your website. That's the only thing which is uh, allowed these days. Gone are those days when the backlinks used to be created by us uh, on our own, okay, which I would say they're called artificial backlinks. Earlier artificial backlinks used to work in favor of uh, websites uh, in terms of uh, optimizing the websites. But now Google finds them so easily and really goes ahead and punishes our website. But still, since the question was there, I'm going ahead and uh, showcasing you the 
way off page optimization was being done and used to work earlier all right give me one second i'm just going to go ahead and open across any specific off page optimization thing All right. Okay, guys, you want to go ahead and uh, start recording the session from your end. You can do that, please. You got, uh, all of you are being made panelists by me, right? So you can go ahead and start recording the session. I am, meanwhile, I'm uh, all right. So we got uh, Pratik in the WhatsApp group who's looking for the link. Can somebody help him with regards to the link? Meanwhile, I'm in the WhatsApp group, please. All right, so here we go. I've, I've got a couple of things mentioned over here. I'm going to take that. All right, so what, why is it that you guys haven't really got the link this time? I mean, uh, Zoom uh, doesn't really uh, do that thing. I mean, Zoom every time. I, I hope everybody received the link. It's just that Ramik and uh, Pratik didn't receive it this time. Okay, I, I'm going to repeat again, guys. So you can go ahead and record the session at your end if you wish to. So Pratik, Ramik, if in case you want to record the session, you can do it at your end also. Okay. So even you didn't receive it. Okay, I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll look into this, that what, what's the problem with Zoom. Thanks for letting me know. So I've opened across one of the off-page optimization uh, report guys of one of my, uh, for one of my client's website. And uh, what has been done over here, artificial backlinking has been done. When I say artificial backlinking, it means that you're not approaching someone, any other website uh, from whom you want really backlink you know a lot of dependency is there it's a third party dependency when you whenever you're going to approach across people it's not that it's not in your hands whether they'll say yes or no and so forth but uh, earlier people uh, in order to remove that dependency they have been doing backlinking on their own by going into certain classified websites is one of the example so uh, various classified websites are there. I mean, if you, if, even if you will go to Google and type in list of classified websites, let's say for a specific region, if your client uh, is based in India, you can type in classified websites in India or whichever particular region your client is based into United States, Canada, and so forth. Whenever you, so when you will get across the list of classified website, all you have to do is you have to go up there and uh, sign up create an account. Now I'm, I'm saying this again, that this particular piece of optim, off page optimization is no more uh, allowed, no more liked by Google, all right. So, okay, this ad doesn't really exist now. So this is an example which used to work earlier. Like you can go onto a specific classified website and just post an across a free ad. And when you're gonna post across a free ad or whatever, uh, you will be mentioning things related to the websites for which you're doing off-page optimization. What used to happen this way, uh, a backlink 
used to get posted. Your website link used to get posted on the classified websites and search engines, whenever they used to come to these classified websites, they used to find out that, okay, there is a backlink coming from classified website and several other different kind of websites. Now these several other different kind of websites, one is the classified, the other one is article submission websites, press release submission websites used to be there. Okay, let me give you an example of an article submission site. One of the renowned article submission site is Ezine Articles. And otherwise there are thousands of article submission sites. You can go over there, you can uh, just go ahead and sign up and create across some content and submit it over there and try to get a backlink. It's, it's way too easy. So uh, joining and signing up on a website like this is very easy. You just go ahead and click on to join in, give in your details, and then it will ask you to submit an article. You can create across a 300 to 500 words article on any specific topic which is related to the website for, or, you know, which you're promoting across, and then publish it, post it and publish it across on websites like these. This is another form of a off-page optimization technique. Let me just go ahead and show you some of the articles which are there. So people still do it. It's not that people are not doing it and I won't, uh, but I won't encourage you. Reason being, Google doesn't really like these techniques now and we've got proofs for that. Uh, the proofs which I would say is that the websites which will be ranking on the top for majority of the keywords in most of the industries you will find the websites which are ranking on the top. They're not taking assistance of these artificial backlinking. Now, this is precisely an answer to the question which I got, I received last uh, weekend, last Saturday from Anuja. She's not present today, but she will be looking into the recording. And I thought this question might come in. Uh, uh, I mean, you, any one of you might also have this question, but if even if you do not have this question, this is just for your... Uh, knowledge sake i'm letting you know that this kind of an activity is not encouraged so what has been done over here this particular piece of article has been submitted by someone uh the name of the person is sandy and it just says what is it that motivates and inspires you and drives you on day by day it's a, it's a normal generic content which has been submitted you might find a backlink over here let's just go further down all right you can see there is a backlink there is a link uh, which is pointing out to a particular website, which is studylight.org. So what is studylight.org doing? Uh, they're doing uh, deliberately, they're doing this activity. They're deliberately try to, trying to create across a backlink for themselves. See, this approach might really help you uh, for a shorter period of time, maybe for six months to a year, in terms of getting your website on, uh, up on the top for the targeted keywords, if you'll follow this approach. But it's, since it's getting discouraged, there's so many videos by Google where they have uh, clearly mentioned that creating links artificially by yourself is absolutely discouraged. The way backlinks should be created or the way off-page optimization for your website should be done is in an organic manner. When I say organic, organic means that somebody liked your website and they themselves wanted to showcase uh, your website content on there and they're giving you credits back. All right, so maybe today, let's say, uh, you've done something great, okay? You've done something uh, extraordinary and people want to go ahead and uh, uh, write about you. Or maybe, uh, Pratik, you didn't miss anything. I just saw your chat, you haven't missed anything. I'm just answering one of the questions and this is the first uh, first. Uh, question which I'm addressing. Uh, so going back, uh, the way organic thing, the organic backlinking work is where people themselves want to go ahead and backlink to you, or even if you're approaching them and they're happy doing it, uh, since you're offering them something in return, maybe you're offering content in return, you're offering freebies and discounts from your website in return, or maybe you're offering some uh, financial, uh, you're doing some financial benefit to them, you're offering money and so forth. That's what. Ramnik says off-page optimization is uh, creating artificial. So artificial is the word which I'm uh, going to remove from this. Off-page optimization is all about getting backlinks, uh, backlinking done for your website. The artificial word is something which used to work earlier. 
this is an artificial backlinking you know getting backlinking from uh, article submission site like this getting backlinking from classified submission site like this is absolutely discouraged we do not uh, 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 i mean i am i'm not an advocate of this i do not promote this i only promote the organic backlinking which happen on its own or you approach people and uh, uh, it's it's on a mutual consent basis just going ahead and creating backlinking on your own on these websites is absolutely discouraged all right so this is just an answer to a question which came in last uh, week is there any other question which hasn't been answered uh, maybe uh, during the last session or during this uh, last week you had uh, you've been uh, looking at the recording videos or and so forth or you have read something and you want to ask me pratik says so we should not know you should create backlinks it's not that i never mentioned that you should not create backlinks you should not create artificial backlinks that's what i would say these artificial this artificial backlinking should not be done the backlinking should be done in the other manner which i did spoke about in the last session all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you across certain uh, tools which are used across which you can use across in the in your seo campaign and then we we'll today start with the paid campaigns all right since search console was already done and uh, the artificial backlinking i have already addressed are we all good any specific question you guys have do let me know anuj mukul pratik ramnik sobek are you guys good can i get a confirmation from you all right thanks uh, sobek mukul anuj uh, no means okay you do not have a question and you're good that's what i think so so let's move further and uh, there are two three tools seo tools which i'm going to talk about today otherwise uh, there's several tools available there's several tools available and so it says could you see into my website later sure so it absolutely you can go ahead and uh, send it across to me on my email and whatever questions or queries you have with regards to your website you can send me that as well there you go that's my email address okay so this document is already been shared with each one of you i've shared the questionnaire and so forth the keyword mapping keyword analysis part has been done just doing a some small recap right so we did cover across keyword analysis the keyword mapping was being done we did cover across the on page optimization part right we understood the title meta and all of these tags and so forth uses of pipe symbol blah 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 all of these were being done all tags header tags right i hope everybody remembers and recalls that keyword density sitemap.xml and also these all right keyword density checker tool sitemap.xml robots.txt that was being done and also the domain authority page authority did i mention did i tell you about the anchor text guys what exactly an anchor text is the text which is made clickable all right we have and let me just tell you so there is this term which is used quite uh, frequently in the internet marketing world guys which is called anchor text okay let me tell you about this what anchor text really stands for anchor text is the text which is made clickable so for an example let me go on to a website all right so i'm i'm going to take across an example from any new specific website it could be from anyone all right so let's say this is a specific uh, news piece and uh, on any particular web page guys 
the text, the content which is there, uh, which is not been linked is fine, but the text which is made clickable, that's called an anchor text. That's the only thing. It's as simple as that. So over here, Shah Rukh Khan text is made clickable as we have got a different uh, you know, mouse icon on this. Uh, the more I'm going to click onto it, obviously it's going to make me reach, uh, make me uh, direct to a different website or a different web page. It could be either on the same website, which is Times of India. All right, so it's there on the uh, same website itself. So this is internal linking, basically. Hyperlinking some text is absolutely, uh, that's what anchor text is. That is correct. So anchor text and hyperlink are absolutely same. That is correct. Yes, you got that correct. So text which is hyperlinked is called an anchor text, right? We understood this part. And uh, though the example which we saw just now with the Shah Rukh Khan one, the moment I clicked onto it, it didn't redirect me to a third party website other than Times of India. It had, it, had that been uh, done, then that would have been ex, uh, outbound linking. Outbound linking in the sense from time, Times of India is giving a backlink to someone else. So for Times of India, it's going to be an outbound link and the website which will open up after clicking onto this, for them it would be an backlinking or inbound link. But in this case, since it's directing us towards another web page of the same website, which is Times of India, so this is internal linking. All right, this is internal linking. But after clicking onto that link, it's, this, uh, it's the same web, website, but a different web page of the same website. That's why it's internal linking. Internal linking is also important in search engine optimization. Wherever you find within your website that you can go ahead and pl uh, place across links within the text, and these links are of your internal web pages only, it's always going to help. Search engines this way are going to find out various different web pages of your website easily sitemap also does help in that but internal linking within your web pages of your website is also important pratik says anchor text is always internal linking or it could be all right anchor text is uh, both ways internal linking also and it could be outbound linking also that's a great question all right i hope that you got the answer so it's gonna be both so let me see if there is uh, outbound linking also. Maybe. All right. So not this one. There can be a link somewhere or the other, which can lead towards another different website. Okay. So that's about anchor text. I'm just referring my document once again. I have told you about DNPA. No follow tag. You can just ignore this. This particular thing doesn't really work now. So in the document, guys, you can ignore the no follow tag section since this doesn't work now. Duplicate content, I have already, uh, we have already covered this part, the copyscape and the DMCA. Okay, the meta robots, robots.txt has been covered. Okay, uh, now here comes in the tools, robots.txt has been done. There's this tool, some small little uh, resources now I am giving you. The search engine optimization has been done in full. Now these resources which I'm giving you are some, are some extra resources which will help you. And I'm, I'm gonna procure across a, uh, a paid SEO tool. I'm gonna see which one is that gonna be and I'm gonna give you access to that also. So uh, we, we're just making a decision which one shall we really go for. And uh, like I did mention in the first and the, the very first session during our expectations, right? I did mention that we will be going ahead and uh, giving you paid tools access so that uh, you, you do get to understand how they, they're being performed. And I hope you guys have worked on your website and you have created tags and so forth. So uh, next to next week, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send you across an email saying that please do submit at least, uh, you know, tags for five of your web pages of your website at least because we're going to be reviewing that that's very important so make sure your websites are ready that's the only thing which i'm trying to tell you now this is resource number one this particular website which is called responsive design checker guys is a great webs uh, great tool to check how does your website 
appear on various different platforms, various different devices, basically. Whether it's on iPad, landscape, portrait, Nexus 7, iPhone, uh, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 15 inches, workstation uh, 17 inch, 27 inches, and so forth. So it's called Responsive Design Checker. All right, you can go ahead and type in across our website name. And the moment you're gonna go ahead and do this, so I've, I've post mentioned across my website name URL over here. And now I can see how does my website look like on all of these? All right, so it's just gonna take some time. All right, so on an iPad, the website looks absolutely fine. There's nothing uh, which is getting cropped. The images are coming up properly. The text is coming up properly. That's the only thing which we can really look. iPad, portrait, all right. I wanna check on a bigger screen. It's working in fine. Now, since my website is made uh, also using across these responsive templates, the templates guys, which uh, I did mention, we use across for our website, right? All those templates are responsive. So I can see my website is appearing absolutely fine on iPhone, portrait and landscape and so forth. Also, one more thing I would, uh, now this reminds me with, with the theme part, the responsive themes, this reminds me of one, uh, you know, uh, announcement which I did in the WhatsApp group that uh, if in case you're looking for a paid theme, I can give you across a pay, so I'll be giving you across a paid theme for free. I did mention that across in the uh, first session in the, uh, during the expectation mapping, during the expectation mapping, I did mention that we'll give you a domain, we'll give you across a hosting. So guys, whatever money you've spent in across on your domain, uh, do pass on your bank details to Nitin. He'll get that reimbursed because that's an investment which is gonna be from our side. Hosting has been already given by me and WordPress is installed and so forth. And the next thing is the theme which we have promised you, which I have promised you basically, the paid theme. Here's this website, which is called themeify.me. They have got uh, more than 100 themes, more than 100 paid good looking themes. You can go onto this platform, just check for all the themes, whichever theme you find attractive and you want it, just let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and upload that across for your respective uh, WordPress website. All right, so I won't change my website theme. Sure, Anuj, you can, just browse across on all of these themes and see which one uh, you're more comfortable, you want that. So let's say, you know, a corporate theme, you can just go ahead and simply click on to demo and uh, you'll, you'll get to see. The way this particular theme is like, all right, so it's taking a bit of time to uh, upload. <clears throat> Right, so Sovik, you can pass on your details to me. I'll, <clears throat> you can email me, like I said, I'll reinstall the WordPress. And Anuj says, can you do it on my website? Sure, Anuj, you just need to let me know which particular theme you want, and I'll, I'll get it done. So guys, I'm saying it again. What you have to do is, you have to go to themeify.me, look into the various themes, and whichever theme you need, do let me know maybe on the WhatsApp group and or maybe in the uh, personal WhatsApp uh, private window. You can just let me know which theme are you looking at and give me your WordPress details. I'll get that set up. So this is how uh, a corporate team really looks like. So you, you'll get that in the same manner. Once that gets installed on your website, you will be able to edit it and so forth. All right. And... Uh, Ramnik, you said that you have got the domain, you have to change the name servers and so forth. You can refer to the previous sessions recording, get the name server changed. Why I want you to do that is because you'll understand the concept this way. And once that's been done, uh, install Word, uh, I, I'll give you the hosting. So just change the name servers and then I'll give you the hosting. Okay, so themeify.me. I know each one of you are busy throughout the week, right? You, you've got uh, your own personal work. 
it becomes difficult to actually balance out both the things, but at least take out half an hour. Half an hour a day is something, is, is a great investment, okay? So responsive design checker, I'm not asking, I'm not expecting more than half an hour, guys. That's absolutely uh, more than enough. All right, so Google Webmaster, we have already covered. So I've shown you responsive design checker. I've shown you Google Webmaster or Search Console. I hope you guys remember what's the overall benefit which Search Console does for us. When, when I say us as in the search engine optimizers, right? Google Webmaster or Google Search Console. We saw how do we really implement this across on our website and how does this really help? Okay, so we got that done last time. <clears throat> now another resource, another tool basically, which is mentioned right up here in the doc and uh, it's used by various search engine optimizers. All right. It's called the Mobile Friendliness Checker by Google, basically. All right, so I've shared the link also in the chat window. You can anytime uh, click onto it and open it in your respective browsers. So. Now, as you can see on the top in the URL, it says search.google. So this is precisely from Google. Uh, it, can, it can't be more authentic than this if Google is actually giving, giving you something, all right? So over here, what you can do is you can type in across our website URL and see what Google has to say about your website from the perspective of mobile friendliness, all right? When we say mobile friendliness, I mean a uh, website which is, uh, are your website, is your website doing well on the mobile device or not? Is it appearing perfectly? Is, is the text appearing fine? Are the images getting uploaded easily? All those things. If there will be certain uh, things which needs to be corrected, this particular tool will recommend that. If, if those recommendations would be very much development uh, related, then uh, anyhow you need to connect with the developer. But if you're using these themes, which I am talking about, the paid theme, which I'm gonna give you, right? Uh, you won't have any trouble with them. They all are mobile responsive uh, already. All right, so it's uh, still fetching out. It's doing its work at the back end. All right, see now it says, Page is mobile friendly. It's opening up perfectly. There's some page loading issues. Page partially loaded. It says not all page resources could be loaded. This can be, this can affect Google sees and understands your page. All right, so there are 36 pages which have got some issues. So it says, is it possible to change my website name? No, that is not possible. I wish. <laughs> right. So whatever domain you've already bought, uh, you might have to really get across a new domain in that case. But uh, changing the existing one to a new one, it's not possible. That's what. All right, I can, I can uh, give you hosting for the new domain if you want to book that across. So we, we actually go ahead and give you one domain per, per, per candidate. So one could be from our side and the other one could be, you can buy that. So that's, that's something which you can do. And guys, I'm repeating again. Uh, you have to let me know about the themes, which themes you want, and you can pass on your bank details, please to Nathan, and he'll get the amount uh, reimbursed, whatever you, whatever you have invested for the, uh, what do you call, uh, the domain part, all right. Uh, so it says, so from Big Rock, I can buy another for 99. Yes, you can, absolutely, Savik. You can even do it from Google, uh, from, from GoDaddy once again, by just going into incognito mode, all right? So go to Google Chrome, click right up over here in these three arrow, uh, three dots, and you'll get the option of opening new incognito windows. And right, we did it this way, right? So uh, that, that way you can do it. 
All right, so this is a mobile friendly test. So like I saw that there are 30 second, there are 36 pages on my website which are not loading up perfectly. Otherwise the entire website is doing well in terms of uh, the mobile friendliness. It's showing in green. That's the only thing which we need to really look in. If there are certain issues, then we need to really uh, get them fixed and so forth. Now the, the fixation part, if it's a development related, then you have to get across someone from uh, who, who understands the coding and can do it for you. But if you're using these themes, then you won't have any problem. Now the other tool, the other resource is the moz.com. Moz is the same, uh, I mean, it's the same organization. I mean, it's the same tool which we used, similar tool uh, which we used for the backlink checker. The other day we saw the backlink checker from Moz. Now, Moz doesn't just have the backlink checker tool. It does have various other, uh, I mean, it does have its own search engine optimization tool in totality. What you can do is, now this is great that they do offer a 30-day trial, guys. You can try using that. So let's, let's create a cross. Let me see how much time would it take. All right, so I think, okay, they, they will not let me get inside till the time we do not enter across the payment information. So we do need a credit card for that for sure. Okay, so let me, uh, I'll, I might actually see whether we have to buy this or the other one. But let me tell you about this. So what the Moz tool does is, it does the same thing. Uh, as you can see, the first and the four, for first, the topmost one is the op Moz Open Site Explorer. It does give you information about the domain authority and page authority about various different web pages, websites which you want, right? Which you saw the other day. Uh, the only difference is that the paid one will, uh, and the free version which we used the other day, is that the paid one actually allows you to do these searches n number of times in a day you can actually check for the backlinks for various different websites on on a constant basis in a particular day you can do multiple searches whereas with the free version only three times only three searches per day is allowed that's the only difference so why to really get bothered with that you can if in case you are at the initial level of learning you can anytime use the free version all right plus uh, uh, after giving across backlinks to you, the Moz Pro, this is the name of the tool, it does give you all the other things like, uh, you know, any specific more keywords which you should really look in for, like keyword opportunities, crawl errors, crawl errors are the same thing which your Google search console also gives you, competitor suggestions. So competitor suggestions uh, in this section, Moz lets you know that which are the other competitors that are doing well for the same set of keywords for which you also want your website to be up. Uh, your competitors might be creating new content where, which you can really uh, also get for your website, something similar to that. They might be creating across backlinks from various different websites, which Moz will let you know that uh, your, your competitor is uh, you know, doing all these activities. Why don't you really go ahead and uh, do, do something better than this or something at least uh, related to that so that you do not stay behind. So that's what this Moz Pro uh, bigger tool really helps you with. The only tool which we saw from the Moz was the backlink checker, but this is the, the all-in-one SEO tool basically, the all-in-one. It's giving you keyword opportunities, crawl errors, competitor suggestions. Okay, so that's the one. You can see more features about Moz Pro. That's the name basically. So Moz Pro will also let you, uh, will give you across the ranking. So whatever keywords you will mention, whatever keywords you will, uh, for which you want your website to be up, you don't have to manually go ahead and uh, keep on typing those keywords into Google and keep checking where is the website ranking. Automate, automatically, this particular paid tool, which comes for $99 a month, all right, it will give you the ranking 
the present ranking plus it will give you a com a comparison of your present ranking for the keywords which you're eyeing for uh, which you're eyeing for uh, compared to the, your previous ranking your last week's ranking so week by week comparison is there all right and uh, not only just for google it will give you the ranking if you are looking for optimizing your website and ranking it across for a different search engine also like bing it will give you for bing also now one of the most one of the uh, i would say frequently asked question from uh, quite many participants uh, which i come across with this that what exactly do we do on the website in order to rank it across on a, a different search engine maybe bing and so forth well, the answer is you do not have to do anything different. All the on-page and off-page techniques which we have understood and learned, the same things needs to be done for getting your website ranked across for uh, Bing as well. Okay, so that's the thing, guys. With regards to Moss Pro, it will give you also the ranking and so forth. Plus, it will give you so rank tracking, competitor rank tracking. It will give you even your the ranking for your mobile site. So the ranking which your desktop site is getting across is not going to be similar to as your mobile one. Your the keywords which you are eyeing for, uh, it it would uh, not give you the same ranking for both the devices. It's going to be different. So it'll, it'll give you ranking differently for both the devices and so forth. It'll give you suggestions and so many other things. That's what the Moss tool, Moss Pro tool, helps you. And the other thing is also the keyword research. The keyword research part, which we did with the help of keyword planner tool, this Moss Pro tool also helps you. So it says this 30, the 30 day trial includes everything. Yes, the 30 day trial includes everything. Uh, so what you can do is you can set up across an account over here. It will ask you for a uh, credit card details, right? Make sure if you want to cancel this subscription and don't want to get paid for the next month, on the 29th day, you have to come back to Moss Pro, Moss Pro again and uh, cancel that subscription because they'll automatically charge your credit card. This is the uh, only catch. So you have to be very careful if in case you don't want to get charged $99, okay? So these are the things which it helps you with. All right, Back, the backlink stuff, we have already, how much is the monthly charges? Minimum is $99 per month. Let me give you idea about the pricing also all right so standard one is $99 per month and it says five campaigns five campaigns it means five websites five different five only five websites you can actually mention enter across in the standard package and uh, keep tracking uh, keep doing seven things and the maximum number of keywords for all the five websites, which you can mention is 300. So that's up to you. How do you want to really go ahead and dice, uh, dissect this? Maybe 60 keywords per website. So which in total comes out to 30. Or maybe for one website, you can use all the 300 keywords. That's up to you. So 300 keywords totally it will give you ranking for. Uh, spread it across five websites. And... Uh, it will also tell you about how many, the crawling of the pages, all right? So maximum 250,000 crawl pages per week, it'll give you a report, it'll, it'll tell you about that. So crawling, we basically, what it stands over here is that, it'll tell you when all Google has come and uh, crawled across a particular web page. Manually also it can be done. So today if I want to know uh, when was the last time Google crawled my website, I can do it with a specific command, guys. That's called cache. It's called C A C H E. All right. And then the website name. So you saw what I did. I'll just do it once again. So the last time Google Crawler came onto Amazon was 29th of April at this time. Manually, we can check for every specific web page. When was the last time Google product uh, came to the web page and crawled it? The sooner it keeps coming, the frequently it keeps coming, the better it is. And the way you can really keep uh, getting a cross crawler on your website on a frequently basis 
is by doing on-page optimization and off-page optimization only. All right, I'm going again, uh, going back to Google and typing in this command again. It's called cache, C-A-C-H-E, colon, amazon.in, the name of the website, that's it. The moment I'm gonna try type that across, it'll give me on the top the date when, the date and time when the Google crawler actually came to this web page and crawled it. Crawled in the sense, scanned it and uh, took the data and uh, refreshed the data in its database. So last time, let's say the Google crawler, before 29th, it might have come on, let's say 27th of April. So if there would have been any change uh, between the content which was there on 27th and 29th, uh, that change will get updated in the database of Amazon. So that's the reason why crawler keeps going on to the, every single website again and again on frequently basis, just to keep its database updated, all right? That's the idea behind doing this. And Pradeek said this is public, I mean we can see for absolutely this is public and you can see it for all, all of them, that is correct. All right, so that's the one and uh, Okay, how many users could be there and so forth? That's all right up over here. So you can try this for free and uh, so forth. So this is the standard one, guys. Hope this makes sense. Perfect, so this is one of the tool. The other tool, guys, is uh, Web CEO. Now, the, if, you, if you ask me uh, which one is the most effective tool, definitely Moz is the most renowned one. Otherwise, there are so many tools available across in the industry. Web CEO is another tool. It also does the same thing. It gives you ranking. It helps you to uh, get keyword suggestions. It gives you many more other opportunities, many other, uh, if, if you, uh, if your web pages have got short title tag, long my title tag, missing title tag, all of those things which even Search Console did, uh, and all those uh, unpaid tools did, these paid tools basically coll collate all those things which the free tools are doing. When you're starting fresh, you can really avoid the avoid investing in these tools. Uh, reason being, uh, you know, uh, if you if you do this manually on all the free tools, you'll, you'll understand and you'll grasp the things much better. And there's no point in investing initially. When definitely the size of your websites on which you're working across becomes bigger, then these tools are needed. All the agencies guys uh, who are working on several bigger websites, they need these tools. But you've understood the essence that what exactly is this, right? What exactly these tools do. Now this particular tool is also have got a similar pricing that means the first and the foremost thing I can tell you about is the pricing part only. It starts with $99, $199, $499, and so forth, okay? And all it does is, all right, let me just sign in. I've got uh, the free version of this. So earlier, I had the paid version for Web CEO and Moz both, but uh, we, we don't find it... Uh, so effective reason being the paid tools, the, the uh, unpaid tools actually do the overall task for us. So in this particular tool, Web CEO, I've got a couple of websites which I have mentioned right up over here. It's giving me uh, data about uh, all the things, like you know how many backlinks, so backlinks have gone up. There are certain links on my website which have broken up. When I say broken up, in the sense those anchor text so there are 45 anchor texts on which uh, the links are broken. They're not uh, landing onto a page which exists now. So usually, you know, when ha what happens is when you are doing the backlinking process, you're creating links basically, either internal links or external links, which is uh, giving an outbound link. You do tend to give it across to web pages which are existing, but later on, uh, you just tend to forget to check whether those web pages still exist or not. Certain times, the web pages to which you're giving across a link, whether it's an internal link or an external link, they might get broken. And the way, the reason why they get broken is because those web pages are no more there. 
they have been deleted. So that same Shah Rukh Khan example, if I'll take, let me just go back to that Shah Rukh Khan thing. So let's say today, it's April 29th, this particular news piece has been uh, posted across and there is a backlink. There's an internal link, sorry. There's, a, uh, there's an internal link which is given across to a, another web page of the same website, which is Times of India only. And the, the page which will open up after clicking onto this is the Shah Rukh Khan page. Let's say that Shah Rukh Khan page gets deleted after two days, all right? Then this particular link will become broken link. This particular link will become broken. The moment somebody will click onto this clickable text, it will show a page will open which will show that this page does not exist. If that happens, it means it's a broken link. So this is another thing which needs to be done on regular basis by the SEO guys that they have to check for broken link guys. So there's a tool called broken link checker. Now this is a manual process guys. You have to really check the broken links with the help of a tool and then go ahead and fix them up. These tools will actually tell you where are these broken links on your website and how do you really go ahead and, uh, I mean, you have to go manually and set that up. So this is a tool which is called broken link check. Let me just go ahead and paste it in the chat window also. Let's say let's do it for times of India only. So All right, so uh, now you know, you've understood like what are those things which an SEO guy has to really do on a regular basis, what sort of stuff he is responsible for, whether he's working for, a, for an individual client or he's working for an agency and so forth. He has to keep an eye on the uh, broken links. He has to keep an eye on the search console. He has to keep an eye on various keyword opportunities. He has to keep an eye on the duplicate content and so many other things, right? He has to keep making sure that the backlinks are getting created. The on-page optimization for all the new web pages are getting done. When the website size is bigger, definitely it has to be a team which would, uh, which needs to work onto it. Oh, okay. See, this is asking me for money reason being, uh, I've entered a website which is pretty massive. Let me just take a cross example of a smaller website. Mine is like 600, 700 pages only. Pratik says means, I'm sorry, uh, means to which, which particular thing you are saying means. Can you, can you let me know? It's asking for money. Uh, broken link checker tool is asking for money. Reason being I had entered Times of India website, which is a bigger website. If you are entering across a website, which is uh, way too big, then it's going to ask for money. Broken link checker. So I'm not sure whether it needs, whether it's going to check for websites which are less than 500 pages and so forth. All right, so as you can see, it's doing the processing work. All right, so it will keep doing and then once it's done, then the entire report will come out. So we'll, we'll uh, come back to this after a while. Let's see the other tools. So I was talking about web CEO, I'm going back. So broken checking has been shown to you and so forth. So you, you get across all these things. If you go further on the top of web CEO, you can see these all things it does. It helps in sitemap generation. It helps in uh, looking at the backlink quality, uh, looking at the competitors backlinks and uh, also you can connect across your Google Analytics and Facebook uh, pages uh, over here also. So that's one more additional thing which you can do with Web CEO, which you can't do with Moz, 
uh, with Mozilla not able to connect across your Facebook and so forth. But whereas with Web CEO, you can do that. So all in all, these paid tools are actually helping you to collate everything at one single point and uh, giving you the, I mean, helping you to live a better SEO life, right? If you're working on search engine optimization for bigger websites, for multiple websites, these tools are helpful for those kind of people, right? So that's another tool. And let me see which other tool. So small, or it's a small SEO tools is another website where you can find in uh, free tools, okay? Small SEO tool is a website where Various different things can be done for free. You can check for plagiarism and so forth. Well, re article rewriter, you can just ignore this because this this is a altogether not at all recommended. It can check your grammar. It can check for backlink, backlink, all right, and so forth. The Google page rank thing is also outdated, so there's no such thing as page rank these days. Earlier it used to be, and even ping website. So there are quite many things which are actually outdated over here, which are, uh, which are not recommended. So I think over here, the keyword density checker can be used. Many things which you will find over here, which are not, uh, which you're not able to understand so forth easily. Uh, just ignore them, just ignore them. You can see XML sitemap, domain authority checker, all of these page authority checker, all of these things are there. Google index checker is the same, the cache thing which I've shown you. All right. Oh, there are quite many, quite massive things. So I don't want to confuse you with so many things. Uh, just, just focus on the ones which we have covered. Reason being, uh, there are so many things in the SEO industry which are, which should not be done. And the ones which uh, should not be done, we haven't focused onto it. We are not going to learn that. All right, the other tool guys is archive.org. This is another great resource. Uh, this is just good to know, uh, is resource and good to use in a scenario when you want to check how, the, uh, how your competitor's website used to look like, let's say maybe a year back or three years back and so forth. It's, it's, it's called Wayback Machine. You can go to the uh, past, and see how your competitor's website has really got evolved in the last, let's say, five years, 10 years, and so forth. If I talk about, let's say, Amazon, and Amazon's uh, one of the greatest competitor in India is Flipkart. So let's say Amazon wants to check that Flipkart, which is its number one competitor, how their particular design has evolved. What they can do is they can go to Wayback Machine, type in the website URL of their competitor and see the design, the website design basically. All right, so now as you can see, these tall bars uh, which are there, it reflects uh, the number of times this Wayback machine has taken snapshots of Flipkart. So 2016, 2017, uh, quite a many number of times. If we'll go further down, these uh, you know green dots and blue dots and so forth are reflecting the days when the snapshots have been taken. If I talk, if let's let's move on to 28th April 2017. So 28th April 2017, one, two, three, four, five, five times snapshots have been taken. But I don't want to show you the present one. Let's go to 2008. This present one, there's no point in seeing it. Let's say I want, I, I go to, I go to 2008 and 8 Feb 2008, uh, there's one snapshot being taken. I'm clicking right up over here.
All right. So as you can see, Flipkart.com, uh, Flipkart.com's overall look and feel used to be like this in the year 2007. On 8 June 2007, sorry, it's 8 Feb 2008. 8 Feb 2008. The thesis is here, it's not showing the website design of Flipkart, like how Flipkart's website design was. It is showing. This is how Flipkart used to look like. This is a snapshot of Flipkart. Uh, right? So it was not very much in proper shape. It was uh, maybe in the initial years, that's why it, uh, that's how the page used to be. So they were, they had uh, login sign up right over here and these tabs. The customer testimonials were there on the, on the top, which is not so great. Let us see. For 2013, maybe. This site was in which year? So, as you can see on the top, I can go to any specific year. So, 2013, Flipkart used to look like this. So, earlier it was 2008, Pratik, which we saw, and now the snapshot which has come in is 2013 now. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Mukul, for acknowledging, and thank you, Pratik, for acknowledging. So that's about another tool, archive. Okay, and then all right, the last tool for for search engine optimization. The last thing about search engine optimization, guys. Here's this tool called Screaming Frog. Have you have I told you about this tool, Screaming Frog? I haven't. All right, let me tell. So it's it's a great tool, guys. A great free tool, basically which does the same set of tasks that is like it helps you to know uh, you know the pages on your website which doesn't have let's say title tag in place or doesn't have title tag uh, uh, in the character in the same characters count which it should be and so forth okay so screaming frog you can download it across just open and let me give you the URL for the same so all of you can download this. All right, so it's loading up for me. Maybe it might have got for you. So you can download it by clicking right up over here. All right, so once you're gonna download it, I've already got this downloaded onto my system, so I'm gonna open this, guys. Once you are also gonna download this, you can simply go ahead and check this. Tool for free. You do not have to log in, I don't think so. They're not gonna ask you for login, just go further down, and they, they'll give you this download link. All right, so they are automatically detecting which specific, uh, you know, operating system I have got. I've got Mac, uh, and they're they're already showing it on their own. It will detect. You can just go ahead and click on the download. It will uh, st straight away happen on its own. So keep following the same instruction. All right, so I'm opening Screaming Frog. And this is the dashboard, guys. All right, so it's asking me to wait for another 30 seconds and so forth.
All right, so I hope each one of you have downloaded this. Now what you can do is, once you have downloaded it, you can mention any spe specific website you added on the top and uh, look for it. So, that's why I'm, opening, I'm typing in across one of my client's website URL and I'm clicking on to start. So this is the free version, guys. The free version, what it's going to do is it is going to, the only limitation which the free version has got is that it's going to look only 500 web pages maximum for your website. So if your website is uh, stronger than 500 web pages, uh, you might not get across full analysis for your website. But if your website is uh, smaller in size, smaller in terms of the web pages, less than three, less than 500 web pages, then it's going to be okay. All right, so it's doing its tasks. As you can see, it's showing 7981. So this is moving up. 18 percent, it's been already done. Okay, as you can see, it says the free version of the screen frog SEO spider is limited to crawling 500 URLs, purchase and license and so forth. I'm saying, okay. I hope you guys have been able to download it. Downloaded it, right? All right, now you're downloading it. All right, not a problem. All right, so uh, meanwhile, it gets downloaded on your system, guys. Let me tell you more about it. So what you can do, what you can see is it's, uh, oh, okay, it's, it's still getting done for me also. All right, I'm just gonna wait. Let, let, let this get done for 100%. I didn't realize, I thought it's done in full. Forty-eight person done. Still waiting for it. All right, just give me one second, guys. I'm going to be on mute.
All right, so so we say used up my data limit for the month download is so slow. All right, just do don't download it then it's okay. So I think I can show you right now. You can do that later on. It's hundred percent done for me. And uh, what I want to show you over here is that the major things. I hope everybody is uh, able to hear me and so forth. Right. The, the first and the foremost thing which the Screaming Frog tool is giving us guys is the page title. So you can go to the page title, you can ignore the other ones. All right, sure. Uh, okay, we, we'll go for a break in an, after this. We'll go for a half an hour break, Ramnik, after, after we are done with the Screaming Frog. If you can just stay uh, for another two minutes, I mean, the, your choice, all right. So as you can see, the moment I went on to page titles, it, it is giving me the title tag, which is there for every single web page, guys. So 500 web pages have been crawled by this for, for this particular website by Screaming Frog. And title tag for each and every one has been mentioned. And if you will go to this particular filter for title tag, it will give you a report for various other things. So let's say the missing. So all those pages where the title tag is missing, there are four web pages where it's missing. You can go ahead and export it in an Excel sheet. All right. And then uh, it's, it's going to be right in front of you. Then the other one is duplicate. Let's say there are certain pages where the title tags are duplicate. So there are so many of these pages where the title tag is duplicate guys, right? You can go ahead and get this corrected. Then you got title tags, which has got more than these many characters, lesser than these and so forth. Similarly, meta description, you can go through and missing duplicate more than 156, lesser than 70 characters and so forth. So these are the major ones, uh, page title, meta description, meta keywords also you can find out. So Pratik says this tool uh, is free for 500 web pages. That is correct for 500 web pages. All right, so that's about SEO, guys. We are done with SEO. Why less than 70? Uh, see, every particular tool, so Vic has got uh, uh, their own parameters. What I told you was 130 to 156, all right? Now, uh, if you'll go to various different websites, they all have their own way of interpreting it. Yes, it should be 130. I know if you'll refer a third website or a fourth website, some might say 100, some might say 80, some might say 120. So this is from my perspective. I, I try to be on the safer side and I try to keep it 130 to 156 because that's the maximum number of people which have said. So Moz might say something else. SEO uh, profiler, web CEO, screaming frog, they all have their own small little changes in the character limits. But... Uh, the, the ones which I have told you are the ones which is gelling up well with all of them. All right. If you follow that, you'll be good. All right. So we'll go for a, almost like half an hour break kind of a thing. And, all right. For the bigger break only. And then after that, we'll start with pay-per-click. So uh, I'm going to be on mute and then we'll, we'll take it further from there. Makes sense, guys? So we'll go for a break now. Perfect. Thank you.
All right, so let's get started after the break, guys. Just trying to check if you can hear me. All right, perfect. Thanks, Mukul, for acknowledging. I hope others are also able to hear me up. Huh? <clears throat> All right, so we are done with uh, the very first module, which is search engine optimization. Let's start with the paid way of promoting across. Any specific doubt or query you have at any given point of time, feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and help you out further. I think others are still on the break and they haven't come back. All right, Sovik, Pratik, Anuj, Rim Ramnik is in there. So, Vic, Pratik, Anuj, are you also guys able to hear me? Let me know. All right, thanks, So, and thank you, Pratik. And Anuj, are you also here? Okay. Let's move further. So, the paid marketing, if we talk about through the search engine only. So, we are still on the search engine uh, channel. When it comes down to internet marketing, we understood in the initial sessions that there are certain limited platforms which we as internet users use, right? Uh, search engine is one of them. Emails is another platform which we as internet users go on and spend time. Social media is another one. And underneath social media, there are several websites like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. So. The first one, the first channel which we picked up and understood from the marketer's perspective that how marketers can really go ahead and use that channel in order to get in touch with their potential audience is the search engine. And underneath the search engine channel, I did tell you that there are two ways through which we can go ahead and approach across our potential customers. The paid way where we go ahead and paid across to Google and the other one is the unpaid and the unpaid one is the search engine optimization, which we understood right from the beginning till the end. And when I explained you that, I explained you by taking across a hypothetical situations, examples where I made each one of you digital marketers and I made myself as a, a client, right? Whom, you are, whom, you each, whom each one of you are actually helping out to get across their business, uh, you know, promoted their website being promoted in the organic space. So right from requirement gathering by floating across a questionnaire, then doing keyword analysis, doing keyword mapping, all of those steps which we did, that is the overall procedure. That is the overall thing which one has to perform while being in the agency. All right. So what I'm going to do right now, following the same procedure, I'm going on to Google and I'm uh, going to use across Google as a normal internet user. Let's say I'm looking for a phone for myself. Well, this is one of the things which I always use. And I've already decided that I'm going to buy across, let's say, iPhone 7 for myself. Me being an internet user, what I'm doing is I'm typing across a query, which, is, which was there in my hand, head. Right? I'm translating that query, which was there in my head, into Google search bar. I've entered it. And what we get to see is the search results. The ones which I'm going to go ahead and uh, find it to be relevant to what my query was, I'll click onto that. And the other thing which makes uh, the user go ahead and click across is the position. So the top notch, uh, the topmost results have got a higher probability of getting clicked. And the results which are, which keep, which are underneath, right, they have a lesser probability. That's why there. It's, uh, I think it was in the very first session or the first source of the second session, I did tell you that there is a specific page layout which search engine results page has got. The page layout is something like this, that you have got the shopping ads on the topmost uh, position. Either they come on the top or they sometimes come across on the right hand side. There's no precise number in terms of these shopping ads. The shopping ads are the ones which does have a price, the, pricing also attached to it and it does show sponsored along with it they are also paid ads okay this is something which we'll understand later on 
what we're going to focus across is going to be these paid search text ad guys all right so our next set of focus is going to be how an advertiser and a marketer can create across these search text ads and make them across so uh, much in proper shape or manner that the best of the best return on investment comes in at the end of the day it's all about return on investment i hope you all agree to that every single uh, businessman every single uh, investor who whatever you want to say that wants a return out of their money even that that's quite obvious with anyone right if we also go out in uh, as a shopper whatever money we have in our pocket we always want to buy across those products which are value for money and so forth same applies in over here as an as an advertiser and a marketer when we will be paying to google for getting across our ads on the top and uh, and and achieve and and uh, you know attaining across our marketing objective achieving across our marketing objective at the end of the day the marketing objective has to be achieved within the limited budget and thereby making sure that there is positive return on investment a certain percentage has to be achieved all right so we'll understand all those techniques we learn all those techniques and that's what i'm going to teach you and train you that how do we create not just create the ads creating all these ads are pretty simple and easy anybody can do that any kid can do that but what are those things which we have to really keep in mind what are those things which we are right, so it's going to be send me the document i'll i'll show you so we guy have sent this document several times uh to everybody uh, two three times so i hope you have also received it previously it's the same document is the same uh, document which we have been using uh, uh, right from the beginning all right from next is how do we calculate roi do we have any calculated targets in this new marketing see uh the roi calculation is pretty easy it's all about uh, getting to know how much revenue have you made and the profit you have uh, uh, have been able to incur visa are we as compared to the amount of money which you have spent which i'll show you when we'll be learning all this all this calculation is being done across on spreadsheets only and when we say in digital marketing as per uh, there's no prescribed there's no specific benchmark it differs from industry to industry maybe for an e-commerce industry if, uh, you know it's uh, 10 to 20% which is an average figure in the real estate industry is 30 to 40% which is an average which people do get across otherwise in the education industry i've seen uh, it goes up till 50% the roi 100% also so every particular business runs across on a certain margin on certain profit percentage uh what we will be seeing over here is the there is a term called return on marketing investment so we will not be calculating so i have been saying i know i have been saying myself it's return on investment but usually what we do is we calculate the return on marketing investment when i say return on marketing investment it means that the investment which we will do only in the marketing uh, section only in the digital marketing section we are responsible to go ahead and uh, uh, be, be answerable to the finance team for that we are not going to be responsible as a digital marketer for the expenses which the organization is doing on let's say buying across certain uh, machinery maybe on certain other operational stuff the marketers have got smart they do not want to hold themselves responsible for everything which is happening in the uh, organization and the, whatever expenses so you might see uh, you know an organization might be investing heavily in their machinery in their capital let's say they go ahead and buy across a specific real estate so marketers are not responsible for that yes if you are working as a business head you're working as a top managerial can, uh, guy you're working as a let's say a chief operating officer then definitely you are responsible for all of that since we are learning uh, marketing we are we are trying to be great marketers we are only responsible for the amount of marketing budget which will be allocated to us the digital marketing budget and we are responsible that what's the overall outcome for that and that will understand in detail all the matrices are going to be there when i say matrices all the calculations all the figures are going to be there in the google adwords dashboard what do i mean by google adwords google adwords is a product by google which is going to be used by advertisers like us or maybe for the clients we we which we view guys would be working and so forth the advertisers will use google adwords uh 
product to create these ads and within that particular product the calculations are going to be done automatically some of them would be configured by us and once those configurations would be done we'll get the numbers in front of us that okay yes uh, we have spent let's say 10 indian rupees and we have got 12 indian rupees as a result as a revenue all right so that's just to answer your question ramnik and ramnik you can uh, uh, change your chat settings from private to everyone so that everybody can see your uh, questions and anuj has got a question and says how can we calculate uh, rmi in brand promotion through digital marketing all right so return on marketing investment when it comes down to uh, brand promotion it cannot be calculated trust me it's it's way too difficult if your objective is to go ahead and uh, uh, achieve brand awareness all you can really see is how many uh, people have you touched based with and uh, whether it's leading to whether it's leading to what do you say mm, you know I, i'm sorry i i just got uh, distracted with uh, some some other thing on my phone i'm sorry about that so the brand awareness part it's been calculated only on a certain matrices like how many people saw your uh, ad or saw your website how many people saw your videos you can just calc- just get to know that uh, but the return whether it has turned out to be profitable or not that's not easy that's not uh, really possible by anyone to really calculate that it's 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 way too difficult okay when i say it's way too difficult it's not possible it's only from the sales perspective if your objective is to is something else if your uh, objective is to let's say get across sales and you're calculating romi in that that is possible that is or maybe you can do is one of the small thing that you can do is you can allocate a specific monetary figure to every single person you have touch based with that's what you can do so let's say you know your objective is to reach out to as many people which is brand awareness only so brand awareness is calculated on certain matrices like let's say how many people like the or let's say uh maybe a facebook post how many people shared your facebook post how many people retweeted how many people uh really went ahead and saw your video maybe the views and the number of views on your uh, your youtube uh on your youtube video or maybe the number of people who have come on your website these are certain things which really defines uh the brand awareness uh part how many people have you already so let's say you have spent in 10000 indian rupees and as a result of 10000 indian rupees which you have spent you have reached out to 1 lakh people these 1 lakh people is a total of the video views plus the visitors on your website plus the likes the comments and uh, and shares all right the total of all of that is 1 lakh and you have spent 10000 rupees so 1 lakh is not in the monetary figure you can give across a specific monetary figure to these 1 lakh um uh, number this entire matrix is maybe it could be let's say uh 25 paisa or 50 paisa let's say 50 paisa is give, you you giving across to one specific visit or a visit on your website or a view on a video and so forth so if it's 1 lakh in total and you are giving a monetary figure of 50 paisa to each one of it it means 50 paisa multiplied by 1 lakh how much is that going to come out to i think it's going to be 50000 rupees so you you have spent in 10000 rupees and you have received a outcome of 50000 rupees it's not going to be in sales you're just giving it for your own purpose for calculating roi you never know how much what all different views how many different uh, uh views on your uh, website on your video how much is that really going to get converted into sales that's difficult but this is one way of really going ahead and getting a ballpark figure from the brand awareness perspective anuj says google adwords can help us to increase our sales through e-commerce oh yes absolutely google adwords is first of all going to help you to create across these ads and once these ads have been created they always help you to reach out to your potential customers uh, it's it's very much the same way the seo was helping us so if i am selling iphone 7 as a as an advertiser as a uh, as a business person right 
on my website and I want to reach out to those set of people who are looking for iPhone 7 also, what's happening is I'm trying to connect with them. Either I connect with them through SEO or I can connect with them through the paid advertisements. The idea, the objective is to reach out to your potential audience. And when you're reaching out to your potential audience, uh, you're trying to convert them. You're, you're, you're first of all, by placing an ad, you've done the first step right, that you have, uh, you've got their attention first, all right? And that too of the right individual, since you've done a right keyword analysis. Once your keyword analysis is perfect, you've got the ad right up, all right, by doing several great things. Uh, you have connected with the potential customer and if your ad is really exciting, it, it, it is great, then you're going to get across people clicking onto your ad, which will lead to a visit on your landing page. A click on the, on the, on the advertisement is going to lead to a visit on the landing page. The landing page is the page which opens up once there's a click on the advertisement. The moment there's a click on the advertisement, the page which opens up, I'm saying it again, is the landing page. The moment the visitor reaches onto the landing page, it's uh, going to be his or her choice whether he or she wants to buy the product or not. So it's not that every particular visitor who will click onto your ad and will come onto your website will, uh, you know, buy the product for sure and so forth. There's going to be a certain percentage that is called conversion percentage, right? Which we'll understand also. How do we set that up? Google AdWords will let us know how many people came onto our website after clicking on the ad and how much percentage of them really got converted. When we say converted in this definition in e-commerce, it's a sale. All right, so I would say is remarketing paid? Yes, remarketing is paid. It's one of the form of paid advertising only. All right, Manuj says and social media like Facebook and Instagram also. Yes. Uh, social, so, uh, I, I think you, uh, so I am reading out the chat bit late, Anuj, I'm not able to recall, uh, in reference to what you have typed in this, but, uh, definitely Google, other than Google AdWords, social media also does help you to achieve promotion, uh, in terms of sale. Yes. In terms of sale, it does sell. Yes. All right. Pratik says ads is based on probability. It's not a guarantee in terms of this much sale one will get, but surely it's a tool. Oh yes. Had it been a guarantee, then everybody would uh, really turn out to be an entrepreneur. Pratik. Nobody will actually work for anyone, any other organization. Had it been a guarantee kind of a system, everybody would really fetch out a product and start uh, selling it across and so forth. All right. The Dix ads is based on probability. It's not a guarantee in terms of, a, of this much sale one will get, but surely it's a tool platform that gives good product visibility and brand visibility in the eyes of the consumers, I suppose. The answer is yes. Right. It's just that uh, you can get across positive ROI by making sure that you're doing things in the right fashion. And that's what uh, I'm going to do right now. I'm going to make sure that you understand most of the... Uh, right approaches, the right way to go ahead and uh, get started with these advertisements and uh, the best practices, basically. So we'll, we'll understand the best practices. Okay, so going back to that page uh, layout part, I'm saying it again, it's the shopping ads which comes on the top. Sometimes they do come, sometimes they don't. That's a separate thing. All right. Either they come on the top notch bar uh, before the text ads, before the text paid text results or the unpaid uh, text results, whichever one. Either they come on the top or they might come on the right hand side. There's no minimum or maximum number which Google says about it, but usually you have uh, 8 to 14, that's the average. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sorry, 7 to 14. So 7 is the average. Sometimes it comes only 3. And uh, sometimes it comes also for 13, 14 and so forth. So uh, there's no minimum or maximum. It could be more than this also. But the minimum and maximum for the paid text ads is there for a search engine result page for a particular search engine page. You have maximum four search text paid text results. That's a maximum. This is the maximum guys, which uh, Google showcases. It can be lesser than this in the on the toppers on the on the top, and it could be more than that also. Oh, sorry, it cannot be more than that. It, can, it would be lesser than that. So you got 
one and two text ads over here and if you will go further down you got one two three so four is the maximum for the paid text ads and three is the maximum on the bottom section four on the top and three on the bottom so you have got four and three seven paid text ads maximum in a single search engine result page this is the search engine result page number one this is the search engine result page number two we have spoken about this i'm just doing a recap and the unpaid ones are 10 and this is the minimum and the maximum both all right so it's it's fixed these unpaid text results which is one two three four which is the seo that's 10 all right so that's from the basics point of view let me get back to the document all right so i'll definitely share across this document with you just try to see if you have this set of document with you because i've shared it uh with everyone in the email also i would like to tell you these shopping ads which are the image ads they have got different names the different names are paid search images all right the paid search image ads the google shopping ads that's the other name and then the pla ads which is product listing ads guys product listing ads so pla ads which is product listing ads Google shopping ads and paid search image ads. These are the uh, different names given to it. And also would like to tell you these shopping ads are only created by the e-commerce websites. All right, these shopping ads are created with the help of, uh, with the help of Google AdWords and Google Merchant. That's another thing. So one is that Google, uh, only e-commerce websites can create these. E-commerce websites are the ones where the transactions would take place, money could be accepted or in other words electronic commerce can happen money could be transacted websites where which are accepting money these are they are e-commerce websites which each one of you know about it and only these e-commerce websites can create these uh, shopping ads the product which google offers for creation of these ads are a couple of them google adwords is one common is google adwords is the product which we'll use for creation of the search text ads also for creation of mobile app ads which for the creation of banner ads also we use this and for the creation of uh, video ads also we use google adwords all right for all of that google adwords is one common product which we will use as an advertiser for shopping ads google adwords is there but there is also google merchant center that's another product which is to be used this is just for your knowledge guys let me tell you all right so you would be using both of them for creation of these shopping ads now google merchant center is exclusively used by the advertisers for the creation of google shopping ads only i've already said this and the shopping ads can only be created by e-commerce websites that's also something which i've already said just now websites which have got payment gateway options all right moving further the second form of google search engine marketing the second form of paid Google search engine marketing, which we're going to focus right now is a paid search text ads, which we saw a while back for Flipkart and Amazon, the paid search text ads. I told you four on the top and three on the bottom. And it's not only the first page, which will have the paid search text ads guys. They will appear on the second page, third search engine result page, fourth search engine result page also, and so forth. Okay. So, uh, as you keep going further, uh, they will keep, uh, you, you'll find them. In scenarios when you will not find them, that are going to be the ones when there is not much of competition, guys. Certain keywords which have got great amount of competition, for them, for them, the ads will come on the third page, fourth page, fifth page, and so forth and so on. The first page, uh, if you if you're finding for a specific keyword, there is no paid search text ad it means that none of the advertiser wants to get their advertisement for this it means that keyword they're not finding it relevant they're not finding it uh, you know good enough we did the keyword analysis procedure if you remember the same keyword analysis procedure which we did for seo is the same approach which is used for uh, paid search tax text ads or google adwords or they're also called PPC ads, guys. This is a common term which is used for these ads. PPC ads. Now, what does PPC really stands for? Let me tell you that also. PPC stands for pay-per-click. This is a common name which is given across by people in the internet uh, 
marketing industry guys, PPC, which stands for pay per click. And uh, it's a pricing mechanism basically. PPC is a pricing mechanism. You know, the best part about these ads is whether it's uh, the shopping ads also or these text ads also, the best part is that you as an advertiser do not have to pay money for displaying your ad. No matter how many times your ad gets displayed and seen by several people, you're not going to pay. You as an advertiser will pay to Google on, uh, on, on every single click which is going to happen. Every time there's going to be a click by someone on your ad, you as an advertiser will pay an X amount of rupees or dollars, whatever depending upon which country you are in and which credit card you have allocated and so forth. Okay. So now, you know, the, one of the frequently asked question, which comes in, comes in is that what is that amount, which one needs to pay for per click? Well, let me tell you, there is no fixed amount. This per click price will keep moving up, keep moving down just the way, like the way it's there in the stock market, in the share market. What happens is that, uh, the price goes up, the price goes down, and on what parameters the price goes up and down for a specific uh, share or a stock is, is on the demand and supply. Similarly over here, if a particular keyword is way too much in demand and people are ready to pay a good amount of money, the, the per click cost will actually go up. If there's a specific keyword which is not at all being demanded by anyone, the per click price is gonna be on the lower side. So there is, there is this auction process there is this bidding process, which I'm going to talk in detail as we move further. But just to let you know that there is no fixed price and it's all dependent upon demand and supply. All right. So, you know, for a keyword like buy iPhone 7, what I can see, I mean, it's, it's a very competitive keyword. Uh, Flipkart is eyeing for that. Amazon is also selling iPhone 7, so they all want. Now, Amazon would be very much trying hard to really uh, achieve the first position instead of uh, the second position right now. And uh, it's... It's also not fixed that Flipkart, if it's there on the first position, it will remain on the first position for throughout the day, for throughout the year, for throughout the month. In the very next second, it might get changed. This is very dynamic. The ranking over here of these ads is dynamic. There are several factors which decides the ranking part. Like in SEO, we saw that there were several factors like on-page optimization and all those activities which we understood in off-page also. All those factors determine that which web page, which particular website will achieve the top notch position and so forth. So in SEO, we understood that if you're doing uh, on page in the most effective fashion, you're creating great backlinks and uh, you're doing really well as compared to your competitors on the on page and off page, then the chances of your website coming on the top notch position is, is going to be very high. Similarly over here, there are certain factors which we we'll understand if you're applying in these uh, parameters, these factors, those logics, the chances of your ad coming on the top is going to be higher and in uh, and, and most of the instances, right? But still, the uh, fluctuations are always there. Like I said, it, there's, it's dynamic. If Flipkart is right now over here on the first position, I might refresh it and it might move to position number two or it might reach out to position number three or fourth, maybe in the bottom side. Let's try to do a refresh. All right, so Flipkart is still attaining the top notch position, which is great. One more thing I would like to tell you, whatever uh, ranking I'm getting across for a keyword like my iPhone 7 over here, I'm sitting in New Delhi, India. Uh, some of you might be in some other positions, even in the other part of uh, city, other part of the world, other part of the country. For you, the ranking might be different. So it differs from location to location. This ranking also sometimes differ on the past history, the past browsing history. Same is with SEO. With SEO also, the ranking for the websites, what I am getting across, might not be same as to what you guys will get. And same goes for the paid text ads. And it doesn't just differ on the past searches of the visitors and also not just on the, uh, uh, what do you say, the location. And the other thing which on which the ranking would differ across maybe on the device will not maybe sorry on so on the devices so if i have typed in across by iphone 7 over here in on my laptop whatever ranking whatever 
advertisements I'm seeing, I might not, I might not see the same set of uh, advertisers, you know, ranking up their website, uh, their their text ad coming on the top for for a mobile device. For a mobile device, it might be different. All right. Okay, I've got certain uh, chats right up over here. I'm going to read that out and then I'm going to move further. Pratik says, PPC price is set by Google on the basis of the demand of that product, demand of that keyword, to be precise, and the bid price the advertiser is quoting, right? We'll come on to the bid price, so bid price definitely do matter. And you're saying, depending upon different advertisers bidding for a particular product, it's for a particular keyword the bidding is done, all right? So demand of a keyword and uh, bidding for a keyword. Google set the PPC price. Uh, to a certain extent, Pratik, you're right, but there are more elements to it which I'll, I'll make you understand. So bidding is definitely the major basis on which the per click price gets determined. And bidding is something which is different to it. Bidding is usually defined across as the amount which an advertiser is willing to pay the maximum. You know, today, if I my, my pocket allows me, I am Flipkart, I am Flipkart, my pocket uh, is allowing me to pay 50 rupees per click. I will go ahead and mention in Google AdWords that this is my bid. This is the maximum amount which I'm willing to pay, which is 15 million rupees. Now, it's not that if I have mentioned 15 million rupees is the bid, uh, is the maximum amount which I'm willing to pay, which is also called bid. It's not that Google will charge me the same amount. Google can charge me, which is the PPC basically, the per click cost. Google will charge me either 50 rupees, which is the maximum or lesser than that. So what do you bid as an advertiser and what you get charged uh, as an advertiser are going to be most of the times different because bid is the maximum amount which you're willing to pay and Google will not necessarily charge you the same amount. It will, it might charge you less than that. So there is a formula to that, which I'll come on to it, but I hope you have understood the gist of it. The per click pricing is very much dependent upon the competition, which is around. If I am Flipkart, I have bid in across 50 rupees. Amazon might bid in 70 rupees. Uh, Snapdeal might bid in 100 Indian rupees for the same set of uh, keyword, right? The bidding over here is, first of all, uh, is private. Flipkart doesn't know what Amazon and Snapdeal are uh, bidding across, and uh, same for others. And Snapdeal doesn't know what Amazon and Flipkart are bidding across because each one of them are putting across bid in their own respective Google AdWords. You know, in, in all those Bollywood movies, we see the bidding when it's been done in an auction process. It's basically an open forum where people say, that, okay, I'm ready to pay this much amount for a specific product. Then there's another higher bid and it's a public forum. So it, it's, it's not like this uh, over here in the Google AdWords uh, scenario. In Google AdWords scenario, the auction is there Keywords are being auctioned, but in a private mode. Everybody, every advertiser goes on their respective Google AdWords dashboard, Google AdWords platform, and mention their own, mention their own, uh, what do you say, details. Uh, one second, guys, just going to have a sip of water. Give me a second. Excuse me. So everybody will mention their own specific bids and nobody will get to know who's bidding in what. So it's a private, private uh, overall, uh, you know, atmosphere altogether. And then it's going to be Google who will be knowing everything and Google will decide uh, various things. Anuj says performance of PPC is dependent upon the keywords ranking. The performance of a PPC campaign is basically determined by the conversions which you're getting, the return on investment which you're getting majorly. So uh, definitely, yes, higher you rank, better it is. There's no doubt about that, Anuj. If you're looking to uh, understand the performance of a PPC campaign, uh, you can really look into the you know, ranking of your ad for a specific keyword and Google AdWords will give us that. Google AdWords will give us a report which does, which will mention that on what position your ad has been 
what has been the average position for all the keywords so that is one but the major thing which uh, would determine the performance of the ppc campaign is the conversion percentage or maybe i can say the overall return on marketing investment i have spent in 10 indian rupees whether that led to 8 indian rupees revenue generation which is which would be a loss figure loss scenario or whether it led to 12 14 15 or whatever all right so usually you see from the money perspective how much you spend and how much you received out of it the profit that's the ultimate one all right so that's more basics let me just go further down now this paid form of second form of all right so and it says is it help us to increase traffic on our website oh yes absolutely yes the traffic on our website gets increased with the help of these paid ads that is there's no doubt about that let's say you're not running these ads so if you're not running ads purposes to get traffic ads purposes the immediate purpose would be to get traffic for sure but the end purpose is to get conversions and get profit so if you if you try to ask me what is the objective of running these ads what is the purpose of running these ads definitely it's to get traffic but why are we looking for traffic the end purpose is absolutely conversion and profit if you're not making profit out of our business ventures out of you know our client is not making profit they will not continue they, in their business they will not continue and so forth all right so so second form of google paid marketing is paid search text ads and this form of ad is placed on the google's property now this ad is placed across in google's property which is google search engine only all right well we do have an option to showcase the search text ads on other google's property also for example on google maps google drive google mail and many more which are owned and operated by google guys all right so you might have seen on google mail on google maps and so forth on all of these different other properties of google over there also these text ads do appear it's not just only on the search engine listing page that the ad comes across but it's also on the other ones all right these google property where text ad does appear are collectively known as google search network now guys this is one thing which will keep coming across again and again you have to be very much uh i mean very much aware of what exactly it is these overall google's property google map google drive google mail where these text ads do appear all right along with google search engine they are collectively called as google search network this is give me one second i'm going to be on mute for one second all right so i'm sorry about that so google search network is the term guys which is used across for all of these google's property collectively you know what will happen when we will create ads in google adwords it will give us an option that do you want to showcase your ad on google display network on google search network so there is one more network which is called google display network which we'll talk about as we move further there is something called video network also so search network first of all is uh, the collection of google's own property whether it's google map google drive google mail many other google's property and including google search engine so that's the first and the foremost all right this is one network search network now since i have spoken about display let me tell you what display network is also that's very important well google display network consists of all those properties which are not owned and operated by google all right maybe like times of india if i'll go you might find on various different websites 
which are not uh, owned by Google, but there are ads basically on these websites, which are managed by, which are managed by Google. Majorly it's the banner ads only, okay? The banner ads which you get to see across by advertisers on different websites, they are also being created and run across with the help of Google AdWords guys. So as you can see, Amazon's ad is right up over here, okay, on, in, on Times of India. The moment I click onto this, in this uh, arrow button, it says ad choices this is actually over here with the help of Google. Now you might not uh, really see uh, anything related to Google over here. What are you seeing? It's uh, there are two parties, which is Amazon and Times of India involved over here. All right. But Amazon over here and Times of India over here, they both have not interacted directly with each other. It's actually Google, which is the middleman over here. Okay, Google gives across opportunity to advertisers and publishers both. Now, when I say advertiser and publisher, what exactly do we do? I really mean Times of India over here is a publisher who's publishing content on their website and they're offering space on their website. And this space can be taken up by any particular advertiser to showcase their banner. Advertiser in this case is Amazon, who's trying to advertise its product and that too on, uh, on Times of India. So Amazon has actually gone ahead and created this banner ad and has decided to place it across on Times of India. All of that working has been done by Amazon on Google AdWords panel only. With Google AdWords panel, we are not just able to create across ad guys only on the search engine text results, only on the search engine result pages. Not only these ads are being created with the help of Google AdWords guys, even these ads can be created by you as an advertiser, uh, which would be shown across in different websites. So we saw a while back that Amazon's advertisement, paid text advertisement was over here. So Amazon is using Google AdWords for creating these text ads. Amazon also used across Google AdWords only and Google Merchant Center, which is the second or uh, another product to create across these shopping ads. Amazon will also use Google AdWords only to create across these banner ads and to place it over here. So Amazon will never talk to Times of India directly. I'll explain you the entire process. Pratik say, is it a single payment or a separate payment pay only? Uh, why for which Google search network advertiser wants? I'm sorry, I'm not getting it. You're saying, is it a... So Pratik has got a question, guys, I'm reading that out. Pratik say, is it a single payment or a separate payment? Separate payment that an advertiser needs to pay for getting ads on entire Google network property. Every particular click, on every particular click, there's gonna be a separate pricing. So I know you're talking uh, very much like uh, a person who doesn't want to spend in extra and just want to spend in once and get across ads on all of those. That is good. It's, it's good to think like this, but you know what happens is, if you are Amazon and you're showing your ad on shopping ad and you're showing Amazon as an Amazon, you're showing your ad over here in the text results, you're showing your ad banner ad also in the display network. They all are charged separately. If a visitor will type in a keyword and will click onto the shopping ad, there's going to be a per click price, which will be incurred here as well. There's going to be a separate charge if the Amazon search text ad will come over here and there's going to be a click. There's going to be a second click, right? That will be a second click and uh, another pricing. One, you know, one once more you're paying. And let's say even over here, if somebody is coming onto Times of India and seeing Amazon's ad and clicking onto it, then there's another click. So it's all per click basis. It's all on per click basis. The advertisement uh, which are coming up over here, they're charged on per click basis. All right. So even if you talk about Gmail, Google Drive and so forth and all of them, even on them, even if it's a just search network on the it's always on per click basis. Let's say my text ad. So Flipkart's text ad, let's say it's showcased across on Google search engine result page, which is over here. 
it's shown across on Google Drive, it's shown across on Google Maps. On all of those, whenever there's going to be a click, there's going to be a chart separately. And same is with the other networks. Pradeek say, okay, so ads can, dis can be displayed anywhere. It's only this that the amount will be deducted on click basis. Yes. And the ads will be displayed anywhere, whether it's on search network and display network. It is going to be the advertiser's choice. Where do they want to show the ad? Do they want to show the ad only on the websites which are owned and operated by Google? Or are they going to be able to show it across, show the ads on, uh, what do you say, on, on third party websites, which is the display network? And whenever there's going to be a click on the advertisements on whichever network it shows cases across, there's going to be a charge. The display network definition. All right, so Anand says, can we select the website, the media where we want to display? Yes, absolutely right. I, I was coming out to this. So what Amazon has done, Amazon has, I am just giving you one, I've just given you one example that Amazon has picked up and chosen across. Times of India is one of the websites where it's showcasing its banner ad. Amazon would have also selected many more websites like this. So maybe NDTV.com, maybe Nokri.com, maybe Shadi.com, maybe uh, you, you name some other uh, major bigger websites. Uh, they would have actually selected this. Now the other thing is, these websites which the advertisers can select, like Amazon is selecting Times of India or NDTV, they can only select these websites when these websites also allow. So Times of, there has to be and uh, permission being given by Times of India also. You know, why these websites like Times of India or NDTV will really go ahead and uh, uh, show interest and give across space to, you know, advertiser over here. The idea is that even Times of India wants to, has got a specific motivation for doing this. And that motivation is money. What happens is these websites like uh, uh, any specific websites, which are called publishers, these are content creator and publishers websites. These websites, what they do is they create a lot of content, they publish it across, and they're not charging to uh, charging the customers, the, the visitors, basically. As you all know, it works with the other media also, whether it's uh, television and so forth. We do not pay to... We do not pay for showcasing, for, for seeing across an ad. The advertiser doesn't charge us and so forth. In this case also, what happens is, Times of India, the publisher, basically is not charging the visitor uh, for whatever content creation they're doing, for whatever money they're incurring on content creation. So Times of India has got a lot of expenses to bear. Their development costs, their website maintenance costs, their journalist salaries needs to be paid, and they're creating so much of content and so forth. All of their expenses are going to be taken care and they're going to earn revenue by only offering space, right? The way uh, newspapers and so forth also do, the magazines and so forth. Similarly over here, the way uh, this space is going to be sold across by these websites are going to be with the help of Google itself. Google has got another product, guys, which is called Google AdSense. You must have heard of this thing that many people say that uh, such and such uh, person is sitting at home doing a lot of blogging or creating a lot of videos and earning money by just sitting at home, by creating content, right? And that's what it happens. They earn it through a product which Google offers and that's called Google AdSense. Let me just show you Google AdSense, guys. So you might have seen, uh, might have heard of these various different YouTube channels like uh, BB Key Wines. Uh, you might have seen uh, Superwoman and so forth. There's plenty of channels. I mean, these guys are making a lot of money by going uh, from, from Google AdSense only. Even so many bloggers, what they do is they create a lot of content, they get their blogs popular, they get a lot of traffic, and then they monetize it. Once they get across, so once these uh, YouTube channel owners or website or blogger or blog owners, 
they get across a lot of traffic on their respective on their respective uh, what do you say platforms what they do is they apply for google adsense all right they apply for google adsense and google adsense like i said is a way for publishers who create a lot of content and publish it to monetize their traffic so whatever traffic they are receiving on their website they want certain percentage of that traffic to go ahead and click onto it the moment you know somebody who comes on to times of india and click over here there would be a particular per click price which amazon will give let's say amazon is going to enter 100 rupees that 100 indian rupees per click which amazon will pay whenever there is going to be a click onto this that will go to google first of all google will actually keep a certain share of that 100 indian rupees let's say google usually take 60% google will keep 60 rupees and rest 40 rupees will be passed on to times of india because it's times of india's uh, property where the ad is getting displayed so adsense is a way through which they are able to make money times of india has got their website adsense approved and through adsense only they are able to uh, offer this space to google now it's google's decision to whom all different advertisers they gonna several resell resell this across or right, i'm just going to go ahead and read out further more chats and then i'm going to show you google adsense guys uh anuj says can we select the website on its i've answered this anuj says is google select the website on ranking basis or any other uh for what particular purpose are you talking about google will select the website on ranking basis so google will select the website on ranking basis for what all for ads oh google will actually select that which particular uh advertiser's ad would be shown on a particular website on the basis of, so if you if it uh, google will select the website on ranking basis you know uh if i am amazon uh, let me clear it out anuj if i am amazon it's going to be me only uh who will decide it's amazon only who decides that on which website i want to show my ad either on times of india or on shadi.com or on nokri.com or on uh whatever.com it's going to be the advertiser only which will actually decide and choose pratik says completely free tool or uh, trail period is there google adsense google adsense is absolutely free you can as a publisher you can just go ahead and apply on google adsense when you will go to google adsense for the first time they'll ask you for your website name for your youtube account whichever for whichever purpose you're using it and they'll ask you simple straightforward question like what's your website all about uh and what do you uh, how are you promoting it another thing is that your website has to be at least 6 months old for google adsense to get approved so there is an application for google adsense which you apply google will look into it and if they find that your website is absolutely genuine and it's uh, there for providing value to the end customers then they'll approve it if they find that you're just creating uh, a website for earning money that's it that's the overall purpose they will not approve it so they they do get to find it out make sure whatever website you create uh, has to offer has to have great content has to offer value to the end customer all right a uh, trial period and so forth uh th- this is this is absolutely free google adsense i'm going to explain this further more uh with more examples so don't worry if in case half of this information has been understood guys all right so if times of india have applied on to google adsense and they wanted to make money by offering space several other websites will also go ahead and apply google adsense apply you know uh, you have fill it across an application of google adsense let's say ndtv and so forth all of these websites whose adsense application get approved and they are able to offer space to advertisers with the help of google only being in between right they they all become part of google display network so google search network consisted of all those web properties all those properties which google owns and google display network consists of all those websites which are owned by someone else but they have got their website adsense approved are we all clear with this the difference between the search network and the display network what adsense is 
Are we all clear with this? Any specific question or query, please let me know in the chat window, guys. Can I get a quick confirmation from others, from everyone, please? Are you all good so far? Or you need to look into the recordings? Uh, definitely, you can look into the recordings also at a later point of time. All right. Good, Mukul, thanks. And uh, Sovik says yes. Pratik, Ramnik, Anuj. All right, Pratik says Amazon ad on Times of India page is an example of Google AdSense, yes. So Times of India has actually got Google AdSense uh, applied, has applied for Google AdSense and they got it approved and that's why with the help of that, with the help of Google AdSense, Times of India is offering space to uh, various advertisers, all right? And they're making money. Times of India is making money through this process. From the advertiser's point of view, if uh, Amazon is going ahead and creating an ad, they're just not able to create text ads on the search engine result. They can go ahead and create across ads, banner image ads, and place it across on, uh, what do you say, on various third-party websites which are part of the display network, like Times of India and so forth and so on. So difference between AdSense and AdWord is that AdSense is purely for the publishers like Times of India and so forth. And AdWords is purely for the advertisers like Amazon. In this example of our, Amazon has used AdWords for creating the ad and Times of India has used AdSense for offering space on their website. We'll talk about this in detail. Just do a small, uh, what do you say, uh, search on this and look into and, and uh, refer to the recording once again. All right. I'll repeat. Sure. So, Ramnik, in this example, Times of India is a publisher who has created content and who has got the objective. Times of India has an objective that they want to monetize the traffic. Let's say Times of India is getting across 1 lakh visitors a day. Now, Time Somebody says that, okay, I'm getting one lakh visitors. I've got a, I've got huge cost to incur. I'm paying, you know, salaries to journalists. I've got uh, paying salaries to web developer for maintaining my web property. Now, how do I earn money? So, Times of India uh, has been given across an opportunity by Google to go ahead and connect with several advertisers from one single point of contact. And these several advertisers are in touch with Google also. All right, so Google AdSense is the product which Times of India will go ahead and apply. And if the application gets approved, the application will only have small little details which Amazon or which Times of India will enter, like what is the website all about, how much traffic are they receiving and so forth. Once Google AdSense will approve Times of India application, then Times of India will have the authority to offer space on their website to several advertisers. And these several advertisers will not be touch based upon by Times of India directly. There's going to be a channel. Times of India will only sell the space to Google and Google will resell that same space to whichever advertisers they wish to. And these whichever advertisers are the advertisers who will be using Google AdWords to create banner image ads and then to decide which particular websites on which particular websites they want to show the ad. So other than Times of India, these advertisers will get several websites as an option to showcase their ad. And those web, several websites where these advertisers can showcase the ad, let's say for an example, Amazon. Amazon will showcase not just on Times of India, it might showcase on uh, NDTV, it might showcase across on uh, many other websites which are AdSense, which have got their AdSense approved. All right, so that's what I have repeated. Uh, I know uh, this will not get so easily understood. Uh, once we'll do practical, once we'll talk more about it, once we'll go ahead and search more about it, things will get clear, all right? So I don't, exp I don't uh, want you to really get this thing in the very first go. Even if you have got half of it, it's good, all right? So it says, uh, so AdSense isn't used to advertise our product. No, AdSense is purely by the publisher. Only for, uh, so for, for advertising the product, it's only AdWords only. That's great, Sovic, that you asked me this, and I hope you've understood it now. Pratik says, advertisers like Amazon here will contact TOI here or Google. Google will. So Google is going to be the middle person in between. Amazon and Times of India are not going to be coordinating directly. They have a uh, 
they have a middleman in between, which is Google. So for Amazon, it's Google AdWords, and for Times of India, it's Google AdSense. All right. Pratik says, "So seeking permission." All right, we got that now. Okay, I think if I'm going to go further and talk further more about it, you, uh, you might not be able to consume this content. So we'll we'll wrap it up for uh, we'll wrap it up today, and uh, I would request each one of you to look into the recording uh, and and uh, ask me your further questions which you're going to come up with in tomorrow's session and after that and so forth. All right. So tomorrow we'll continue this discussion and we'll uh, we'll move forward with our PPC, the pay the pay per click ads. All right. And uh, we and, and we are definitely connected across on the WhatsApp group. Whatever you have, whatever queries, questions you have, you can anytime ask in there. All right. So sure, absolutely, Savik. Definitely, you can do that. So thanks everyone for joining in. Thank you, Savik. Thank you, Ramnik. Thank you, Pratik. Thank you, Mukul, and thanks, Anuj. Thanks for joining in, and I hope you guys had a great time and you enjoyed the session. In case uh, you have got half of it, I'm saying it again. Uh, you are good. I'm not expecting you to understand this entire concept in the very first go in the very first session. We'll have more discussions around it, and things will get more clear as we move further. All right, take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, and then tomorrow we're going to meet same time. Take care till then. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now. -bye.